Nationwide, math and reading test scores, have you heard about this? Uh, falling to the lowest level in decades for fourth and eighth graders since the start of the COVID pandemic. That, according to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, basically called the National Report Card, it shows that math scores nationwide for fourth graders dipping five points, scores dropping eight points for eighth graders for reading, and fourth and eighth grade scores took a hit also, dropping three points. However, there's some good news here. The report does show that Catholic school students did not have a drop in reading or math scores. In fact, according to some reports, even excelling compared to their public school counterparts. Full disclosure, I went to a Catholic uh, prep school in high, high school, Villanova Prep in Ojai, California. Excellent school, so I can kind of understand, I think, uh, why these Catholic schools are doing so well. But to talk more about this, uh, let's bring in Michael Deegan. He's the superintendent of schools for the Archdiocese of New York. Michael, welcome to National Port. Good morning to you. So, as we were just talking about, and as I went through, Catholic school students in fourth grade did not see a drop in reading and math test scores, according to, as I said, the National Report Card. So, what, what separated Catholic schools from public schools during the pandemic? Well, I think, first and foremost, we can acknowledge that our Catholic schools remained open throughout the pandemic uh, <clears throat> here in the Archdiocese of New York. Uh, we infused almost $10 million in technology and academic support to ensure that our schools remained open during the pandemic. Uh, and I think the reason that we stayed open is because every decision that we made here in the Archdiocese of New York was based on what was best for the children not the adults, not the politics, not the government, but what was best for our children. And our decision was that staying open, remaining open, and infusing tremendous amounts of support, academic support, mental, social, emotional support for our children was what really uh, they needed. And as a result of that, we doubled down on our academic proficiency. And as you were good enough uh, to report, um, the Catholic schools here in the Archdiocese, not only did our English language arts and reading scores not go down, they improved by over 7%. Wow. Well, that's great. Yeah. And, and you know, I think it's an important point you're making about not infusing the <clears throat> politics among our you know, elected officials and parents into the overall equation and also the technology that was used. Um, from the start of the pandemic, Michael, did you see, I'm curious, based on everything that you're saying, did you see a surge in numbers and enrollment numbers uh, in Catholic schools across New York? Yes, uh, we, uh, we were able to register almost 3,000 new public school children uh, throughout the pandemic. Wow. And of course, naturally, in some many cases, those students were behind grade level when we accepted them. And there was a great deal of remediation and support that those students uh, needed and were, uh, were able to receive. That in fact, our test scores reflect the fact that those 3000 students were enrolled in our schools and we did, um, we did really, really well. Uh, I think more than anything else, this is really a matter of parental school choice. Our parents freely chose to send their children to a Catholic school. And I think, to be honest with you, as uh, my, my friend Tim Scott from Carolina said at a recent um, uh, dinner and fundraiser for parental school choice, the future of America rests on quality education. And the future of education rests with parental school choice. So more than anything else, we recognize here in the archdiocese, parents are the primary educators of their children. We're there to help them. So to the extent that we can throughout the nation, allow parents vouchers, tax credits, corporate tax credits to allow their children to attend a Catholic school or for that matter, any non-governmental school, I think it raises the bar throughout the country. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as I said, I went to a Catholic prep school. Um, I'm not going to say when I graduated. <laughs> I aged myself there. But I, but I gave the, I was invited back to give the commencement address, and it was certainly a highlight of my life. Mr. Bunce, my English lit teacher, was one of the most influential people in my life. The guy 
put instilled a love of literature and writing <clears throat> that carries to this day. Real quick, because we, we I think we only have about a minute. Um, with the surge and the, the high enrollment numbers, as you were talking about, um, have Catholic schools in New York experienced any teacher shortages? Have you been able to basically match teachers with the students? Well, for, you know, I, I should mention that we have extraordinarily dedicated Catholic school teachers here in New York. We would never have been able to get through this pandemic were it not for our principals and our teachers. And yes, there was a, a brief shortage of Catholic school teachers uh, in the archdiocese, but we have rebounded. Um, our environment, our culture uh, is really inviting to those that are mission driven. So we are back to where we were before the pandemic in terms of our teacher um, um, employment. Yeah, outstanding. Michael Deegan, superintendent of uh, the Archdiocese of New York Schools, thanks so much for coming on. Keep up the great work. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good to be with you, John. Thank you.